After the 9-11 attacks, two U.S. Senators in media rooms received this letter. The letter reads, You cannot stop us. We have this anthrax. You die now. Are you afraid? Death to America. Death to Israel. Allah is great. For reference, anthrax is a deadly disease similar to coronavirus. The letter was laced with it. As a result, five people died and more than 17 people were infected. After this happened, the White House quickly feared Al-Qaeda's new weapon of mass terror, bioterrorism or weaponized diseases. Bioterrorism is a real threat to, to our country. The White House immediately called John Hopkins University researchers to test the United States' defense against bioterrorism. The researcher's solution to create a simulation called Operation Dark Winter. The division was actually based off this simulation. Here's how the simulation played out. It starts off with researchers releasing highly contagious smallpox in a major US city, Oklahoma City, that spirals out of control. Similar to what happened in Wuhan, the result, our society collapsed in a matter of days. Here's how it played out. First, hospitals were overrun. This sounded an outbreak alarm. The news quickly covered it, which caused people to panic. The panic caused people to raid grocery stores dry. It wasn't long before a real-life Hunger Games started and people started killing each other just to survive. Hundreds of thousands die and eventually society collapses. After the simulation ends, the researchers had a sobering realization. We aren't prepared for a real pandemic. So they warned the White House about the results and gave them a few actionable takeaways. You'd think that the White House did something with their findings, right? Truth be told, they did nothing. Why is that? Colonel Randall Larson, one of the chief architects of Operation Dark Winter, put it best. There is no real lobbying effort for pandemics being done. Due to this, we're vulnerable to pandemics, and we didn't realize just how big of a problem it really was until the coronavirus outbreak. A mysterious respiratory illness. The coronavirus has spread to countries across the world. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. At the end of 2019, a new coronavirus outbreak happened in Wuhan. However, this wasn't the first. It happened before back in 2003, killing more than 700 people. Its origin, China's wet markets or live animal markets. These wet markets are virus hotbeds. Peter Lee, professor on China's animal trade, explains why that is. The cages stack above one over another. Animals at the bottom are often soaked with all kinds of liquid animal excrement, pus, blood, or whatever the liquid they're receiving from uh, the animals uh, above. This is how viruses jump from one animal to the next. To see what I mean, let's use the contagion film as an example. In the film, a bat drops an infected banana into the pig's pen from above. The pig eats it and becomes infected. Later, that pig is slaughtered and the chef touches the pig's mouth. He doesn't wash his hands. The chef then holds hands with Beth or Pepper Potts and infects her. She then goes on to infect others, causing an outbreak that later becomes a pandemic. Without a vaccine, we can anticipate that approximately 1 in 12 people on the planet will contract the disease. And it's this exact process that created the 2003 SARS outbreak and now the 2019 coronavirus outbreak. But truth be told, the outbreak isn't the bad part. It's true that it kills, but it's the fear pandemic that kills way more. Let me show you what I mean. When coronavirus hit, the first thing that got overrun was hospitals. The U.S. now has more reported cases of the coronavirus than any other country in the world. This is the scene outside my job right now. An endless line of ambulances. Tony, the number of hospitalizations here in New York jumped 40% on Thursday, just in a 24-hour period. Then, grocery stores. I just want one pack. No, not one pack. And finally, fighting and riots breaking out in some cities. These are the same series of events that happened in the division. Let's compare the similarities. 
The division starts with hospitals being overrun. The same happens with coronavirus. Soon, news of the virus goes on TV. How do people react? They panic. The same exact reaction happens with COVID-19. The panic then causes shortages of crucial supplies, leading to violence and riots. Again, something similar happens with coronavirus, but at a much weaker level. The only reason why our entire society doesn't reach the division societal collapse is because of the disease itself. It isn't lethal enough. Had the disease been similar to the 1918 Spanish flu, we'd be living the division aftermath right now. Don't believe me? Take a look at this simulation funded by Bill Gates. That's the 1918 Spanish flu in modern day. It reaches almost every major city and kills more than 30 million people in less than six months. The crazy part, this can actually happen. As we've seen from the coronavirus, a contagious disease can develop in a blink of an eye and spread like wildfire. The question, how do we prepare for it? Bill Gates put it best, the world needs to prepare for pandemics in the same serious way it prepares for war. And how do we do that? By realizing that coronavirus isn't the last pandemic. If anything, it's the first warning bell for the next deadly pandemic. Whether from nature or a bioterrorist attack, which has been done in the past, the next one is coming. The good news, it can be stopped, but only if we prepare. If we don't, we risk making the division's Operation Dark Winter scenario a reality. Which leads us to the trillion dollar question, how do we prepare for the next pandemic? The same way we prepared for a nuclear threat, by making our nation's number one priority. When it's a top priority, we can then implement Bill Gates' five-step global pandemic shield solution. Here's how it works. Step number one, invest in poorer countries' health infrastructure. Why? Because this stops pandemics at the root. Let me give you an example. Back in 2014, Ebola broke out. Sure you can remember, it was a big scare at the time, but do you know where it came from? A third world country called the Republic of the Congo. This is bad, you know why? As Bill Gates put it. The problem wasn't that there was a system that didn't work well enough. The problem was that we didn't have a system at all. Put another way, they have no health infrastructure. We have only three treatment centers in Morovia. It's insufficient. That means no epidemiologists, inaccurate case reports, no medical personnel to advise on medical strategy, nothing. As a result, more than 11,000 people died of Ebola. That's horrible. But let's be honest, if it doesn't affect us, we just don't care. Then it affected us. Tonight we have learned one person being tested here in New York City after having traveled to the region. In 2014, Ebola came knocking on our doors and we started to panic big time. Luckily, nothing happened. We were just very lucky that Ebola wasn't that contagious. Had it been a bit more contagious, coronavirus would have been child's play. The scary part, a deadly pandemic can be happening at this very moment and we wouldn't know it. You know why? Because poor countries have weak health infrastructure. But there's good news. We can turn this around if we invest a little money into their health infrastructure. This will serve as the first line of defense against future pandemics. With the first line of defense in place, it's on to the next step. Step number two, pandemic response reserve. Back to the Ebola example. Do you remember how there were no medical personnel to advise on the Ebola outbreak? Well, this solves that. This step creates a dedicated medical reserves corps for any global medical crisis. Think of them like the Avengers, but for pandemics. With these pandemic Avengers, we have the manpower to fight any new outbreak on the ground. The problem now? They need to respond fast. How? With step number three, partnering with the military. The military has one specialty. Killing Nazis. Besides killing, they deploy fast. If we pair the military speed with the pandemic Avengers, we can respond to any medical emergency within hours. This will stop any pandemic, including the coronavirus, before it goes global. But in order to pull this off, you need a highly prepared response team. How do you prepare them? By doing step number four, running germ games. 
These are drills or simulations like Operation Dark Winter. They constantly test the medical reserve's readiness to responding to an outbreak. Whether it's the coronavirus or the division's green poison, these germ games ensure the first responders are ready for any worst case scenario. With a ready pandemic response team, what's next? The final step. Step number five, investing more in cures. Did you know that scientists have been working on a universal flu vaccine? This vaccine, if completed, would basically make you resistant to every type of flu, even newer ones. This treatment alone would save millions of lives. It's treatments like these that need more investment. That way, we can find cures for any type of disease fast. And that sums up Bill Gates' five-step pandemic solution. Bill believes if we follow it, we can prevent another coronavirus from happening. If we start now, we can be ready for the next epidemic. That said, what do you think? Do you think Bill Gates' five-step global pandemic shield solution works? Or do you think there's a better way to prevent a real-life Operation Dark Winter? Let me know real quick in the comments down below. Whatever the solution, I think we can all agree something needs to be done. Otherwise, we risk making Operation Dark Winter a reality.